Uh, good afternoon, sir. Um, again, I, if you could, I would like to you to talk specifically about your five starters, each one, where they're at, um, what you expect from them in, in uh, summer camp, and where you expect them to be at the end of camp, each one of them, please, sir. Sure. Hey. Um, so we got, as you guys know, tomorrow we're going to have uh, Lance Lee, and he's going to do like, kinda like a seam game. Uh, where he's going to throw about four and 65, uh, four innings and 65 pitches. Uh, Lance has been up already on his own, uh, up to uh, five innings and 80 pitches. Um, he did it twice when he was at home. You know, he did about three times, you know, up to four innings. So he's, he's already kind of like built up. But they knew coming in uh, that I was going to like allow them to go like three or four because I wanted to see where they at, uh, when, you know, once they get in. So... For the most part, all the starters are going to – their first outing here, kind of like a single game outing the first couple of days, is going to be at 4 and 65. Uh, and then after that – so they'll be able to get like four outings each, uh, potentially. And uh, the goal is for them to get up to like 6 and 90 before we, uh, we start the season. Uh, and that's the, the case for all of them. Same thing with like Mikey. Uh, Mike has been throwing at home. Uh, he was actually one of those that when we, uh, when we stop uh, in spring training – he was able to uh, continue to throw live VPs at home. You know, they got shut down a little bit uh, for a few weeks, but then he got back up. So uh, back up, and, and he was able to, uh, you know, uh, start getting uh, built up again. Uh, Gibby, uh, Gibby, the same thing with Gibby. Uh, he was uh, uh, up to four innings. He did it probably like four or five, five times uh, the past couple of weeks. I think with Klub, Klub has been up to uh, 80 pitches. Uh, same thing for you know, three, four innings, uh, you know, every time. Uh, so all the guys, and, and even uh, Jordan, Jordan early on was, was not able to do much uh, when he was at home. Uh, uh, but once uh, I, like, opened up, he was able to uh, to start, uh, you know, getting built up. And uh, he threw, uh, yesterday, he threw just, like, two innings here with us because he's, he's going again uh, in a couple of days, and he's going to go four innings. But he was able to, you know, before he, uh, he reported here. Okay. okay, two pitchers wanted about. Jolie Rodriguez and Jesse Ch Ch Chavez, can you update us on uh, their their? Chavez is actually uh, ready to go. He's full go. He's actually going to throw the more one inning uh, as well, uh, and he should be able to get you know through about seven innings, uh, seven to eight innings before we uh, finish camp. Uh, so he's he's healthy. I've seen him throw two, two bullpens so far here, and uh, he looks really good. I was very impressed with the way that. The ball come, was coming out of his hand, a lot of life on his pitches. Uh, so I'm excited. I can't wait to see him in a, in a, in a real game. But uh, he looks really good. Joel is going through his uh, throwing progression right now, uh, and he's looking good as well. He's been playing catch every single day, and so far he's – Thank you, John good. Blake. Thank you, Julio. Thank you, DR. Okay, well, to uh, Jeff. Hey, Julio. Uh, with the roster expanded early on, um, how how is that going to benefit you guys? How do you plan maybe on uh, um, limited innings or you know what, what what thoughts have you guys put put in place uh, there? Well, so right now we haven't really getting you know getting too too much depth on that right now. I mean, the, the Woody and I we talked in the past couple of weeks a few things here and there, uh, but basically, obviously, it's it's really good to have a lot of guys available early on. Uh, we haven't decided how many guys are we going to carry uh, during the first, like, two weeks when we're able to get up to, like, 30, uh, 30 guys in the roster. Uh, but the biggest thing when you have a roster, like, you know, it's, it's just being able to uh, uh, kind of, like, think about, like, winnable, right? You know, you, you, know you, you don't leave the guys out there too long. You know, uh, the same thing with the starters. See, the season is so short. Uh, that you want to make sure that you're able to stay, you know, stay in the game the, the whole time and, and try to, uh, you know, win as many games as you can early on. Uh, and, and that's one of the biggest things, like having as many guys available. Uh, when it comes to, you know, another thing that helps, and I think that was a, the thought at the beginning, uh, you know, we're, we weren't we're sure about where the guys were going to be when it comes to, like, their build-up and all that. And, and I was thinking, of, well, maybe the first couple outings is going to be tough to push the guys to, like, because don't, we don't have enough time to build them up. Uh, that was I, mean, I was thinking about that about a month ago. Uh, but now that we were able to, we nothing happened for that June 10th uh, date that they were talking about. And then you know the guys were able to kind of like continue to their build on their own. And now I'm not really worried about guys like not being able to go along. Uh, you know the first time out or second time out just because 
we, if everything goes well, we will be able to get the guys up to like 90, 95 pitches by the end of camp, which will put them in the, in the just like any year, the, the way we do the build up, they, they should be ready to go right out of the gate. <clears throat> okay. Do, do you have to guard, because the season is short, do you have to guard against guys doing too much? I mean, it seems like there's a balance there, you know, you kind of have to be sharp and ready to go because it's a short sprint, but you also don't want them to go, go nuts. No, exactly. I mean, obviously, it's, it's a field thing as well. Like we got to see where you know where they at. Obviously, in the next the next week or so, once we see them in, in games and and kind of see how you know how far we can push them and stuff like that. Obviously, you know the game will dictate a lot of the stuff that and the decisions that we're gonna get into the season. Uh, mm-hmm. But I say, if everything goes as planned and everything goes well with the guys and the guys are feeling great, uh, I don't I don't really see many restrictions from uh, from the starters. Okay. Thanks, Julio. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, we'll go to Chris Halleck. Chris. Hi, Julio. How you doing? Hey, Chris. Um, so Chris Woodward said, um, I think it was yesterday on MLB Network, that uh, the, the new ballpark is going to play well to, uh, to the pitching staff. Uh, have you gotten any kind of a chance to see how the ball's flying there, and how, how do you feel like the, the ballpark will play a role on the, how, how it can benefit or you know, not benefit the pitching staff? Yeah. No, to be honest with you, I mean, the first day when, uh, uh, when I saw the guys hit last week, uh, you know, I was like, wow, you know, ball is not really, you know, carrying much here. But it was, you know, I, I do have to say we're hitting balls that they were like, you know, kind of like you being used a lot for the past couple of weeks. So the balls were not going anywhere. And, and then I remember that same day on the, for the second group coming in, you know, we brought in, you know, a lot of new balls and just they were taking off. Uh, I mean, it's not like – I wouldn't say it's like the, the old park or anything like that, but I, I just think that, you know, it's probably going to end up playing fair. Uh, and that's kind of like my, my prediction right now. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't see it like the old, the old park. <laughs> um, and also, obviously, you guys are going to be using, uh, utilizing the old ballpark as well. Uh, do you have any kind of plans in place on what exactly you're going to be doing over there? Yeah, well, you know, as, as you know, it's not a, a baseball field anymore. So, it, but it's a it's a good thing that we were able to use, like you know, different things over there. You know, we have the a football stadium, so the guys will be able to play catch over there. Uh, you know, we'll be able to, you know, get ground balls and do things like that. We also have the home uh, bullpen that, that we can use as well for bullpens. Uh, so we'll be able to do certain things over there. Same thing with like the weight room. You know, the weight room still in a very good shape over there, so we'll be able to use that which is going to allow us to kind of like, you know, keep the guys separated, you know, and uh, make sure that, you know, they're keeping them distance and everything early on. And that way you have to have everybody on the same, uh, you know, stadium or making days even longer just because you got to, you know, start a workout. So we'll be able to run like two camps at the same time, like a group in a, uh, at the new stadium and then a group at the old stadium. And we'll rotate so everybody gets to, you know, be on the, on the new stadium as well. So. All right. And I'll go to the back of the line. Thank you. Okay, Evan Grant. Hi, Julio. Hey, yeah, well, how you doing? Um, what's your plan for how you prepare guys to back up the rotation in, in case of an injury or if you do get a positive COVID uh, test? Yeah, good question. So, you know, obviously we, we have guys like, you know, Palumbo and we have Kobe Aller. So they are in kind of uh, – uh, time that everybody, you know, the older starters are pitching. So they'll be built up, up to, all the way up to like 80, 85 pitches by the time we, you know, we start the season just in case, you know, something happened. So uh, the younger guys like, you know, Phillips, uh, that is he's going to be built up as well uh, just in case. And then we also have guys like Jonathan Hernandez that early on I'm going to actually build them up as a, uh, I guess, a starter, just in a regular routine, just to uh, get him up. Uh, just in case, you know, the, the other reason what I'm doing that with him is just because uh, he was in New York for a long time and he was not uh, playing catch outside. Um, so he was like a little behind with that. Say, so I'm trying to kind of like take it easy with him, give him enough that uh, pays off in between. And then, but he'll obviously, you know, once he gets to three innings, I'll bring him back to like one inning, two days off, one inning, so he can get used to a, a being a reliever again. Uh, but we also have some guys that I'm stretching out a little bit to like your Hearn, same thing with like um, Luke Farrell. And so have 
Well, you have five needed as backups so that if you have a guy go down one day or you, you get a positive test one day, you've got somebody who can fill in, you know, almost mirroring the minor league schedule. Yeah, I mean, we'll have guys available, like I was saying, like Palumbo and Allard. Uh, I would have said that I have, like, you know, five full starters. Uh, you know, some of the other guys are a little young. Obviously, you know, Phillips, is a, he's, he's been a starter, in, you know, his whole career in the minor leagues. Uh, but we also have some guys that, you know, we could potentially use guys in, like, three innings stints, you know, kind of use the bullpen a little bit uh, whenever we get to that point. You know, also, you know, we got to keep in mind that we have uh, – we're going to have days off during the week as well. Uh, so you can kind of play with the rotation a little bit as well uh, just to give time to whoever needs to, you know, get back or be ready, you know, to jump in the rotation as well. And last thing for me, um, you're an instructor. Instructors spend a significant amount of time talking closely to the guys they're working with or demonstrating, mm -hmm. doing stuff like that. How is How does social distancing impact uh, coaching? I, I don't think it impacts too much. I think more in the sense that, you know, or you're trying to do like big meetings because you're, you know, especially doing in the meetings inside, that's tough because you don't want to have so many players in the same room or anything like that. So, you know, on, on that end, we're planning to do a few uh, Zoom calls as well just to, uh, you know, to talk a little bit about different things and, you know, about game planning and things of that nature. Uh, but when it comes to like the like one-on-one -on -one coaching, it's, it's, it's actually easier because when we're in the, uh, when we're in the, in the bullpen, you know, like really literally like one foot away from him, anything like that. I'm always like at a distance because you're always explaining things and, you know, sometimes you get on the rubber and kind of like, you know, talk to them about, about stuff. But, but uh, I, don't, I don't see it's going to be a big thing, at least from, from the pitching standpoint. Okay, great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. We'll go to Stephen Hawkins. Good afternoon, Julio. Um, you, you mentioned a minute ago, I want to ask, kind of make sure I clarify. Well, you've got five veterans – starters, which makes a difference and in, in, in kind of guys getting ready for a season. But it sounds like your full, your tone has kind of changed on them being ready to go right out of the gate just because it being a little bit longer. Is that, is that accurate? Did I, did I read that correctly? That because of the yeah. fact you'll have them built up, it'll be more like a regular season than it would be? On a yes. Short and I, that, yes. And then the reason for that was like, so when we think back about June 10, which I was the first uh, uh, date that we got that we were like supposed to start our spring training, you know, back then I remember in, in May, eight thing exactly may 18 i asked all the starters to get in a regular routine and the goal was to get him ready to go three and 50 the first uh outing during the spring training and they were always uh, also talking about a lot of uh, obviously we have a lot of protocols and all this, a lot of stuff like that and they were talking about like potentially like guys reporting in different dates you know like having like a pitchers and catchers camp then position players so when I thought about that, I was like, well, I'm only going to be able to get him like three outings. So it was going to be tough to build him up to like six innings in three outings. Uh, but then that, you know, that didn't happen. And the guys just, they never stopped. They continued to build up. And now we're, uh, you know, starting in, in July uh, 3rd. So which allowed them to kind of get about like three or four more outings uh, in. And they were able to get up to like four and five innings. And which now makes it easy. Instead of me starting at three and 50, I can start about four and 65. I'm built, and just because the guys are, you know, they, they came in a little early, you know, we're able to do some scene games the first, like, four or five days, and that allows us to get an extra outing, basically. And by the time that we're, we're done on the, uh, on the 22nd, you know, we're spring training, the guys should be up to, like, six and nine. How much of an advantage is that to, for you guys that you're, it won't look that much different for you going into this season as it would, you know, on a normal time? Yeah, I think it's a great advantage. I mean, and when you look at our, our pitching staff, who's the and, and then the veterans. I mean, you know, the, our strength of our of our whole pitching staff is, is you know, we can say that is a starting rotation. So just having uh, you know that that luxury that the guys are actually ready to go, and I don't have to worry about uh, if everything goes well. Of course, uh, I don't have to worry about like the the pitching count. Like, hey, we got to keep this guy at seventy five pitches and things of that nature. You know, it's, it makes a big difference. We see. I mentioned earlier, you know, the, the game will dictate how long we, we keep the guys out there. Last question I have for you. Clearly, your your games right now are inter-squad games. You might have a couple against outside competition before the season starts. Talk about how that kind of plays into it. Because you're going to be facing is – it, is it harder to do or, or do you not worry about that because they're just going to be facing live hitters, whether it's your guys or somebody else? I mean, it's, it's – I think it's, it's not it's not hard for the guys. Always, it's not the same as like you know playing 
and somebody is in a like you know the adrenaline standpoint and and uh, and all that and then competition. But I think the guys, you know, all our guys know that the situation we're in, and we're not the only one situation. So you know, I told them, well, we got to find a way how to you know our competitive you know out there and make sure that our adrenaline is going and and treat these like you know we're actually facing somebody else. Uh, just to get, you know, get them ready and all that. And, and they know, they know they have to get after a little bit. And one of the things that we've been, you know, monitoring is, uh, is their velocities. And, and, and from some of the stuff I've seen so far, just in uh the, their velocities, a lot of the guys have, have been there, you know, it's, which is a good thing. When, and, and that gave, gave us a little bit of a that comfort that, okay, the guys are actually getting after. They're not, you know, getting on that sense, like, oh, I'm, I'm facing just the same guys over and over. They know that this is a situation where we're in it's not the All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Go to Emily Jones. Go ahead, Emily. Hey, Julio. Hey, Emily. Uh, I just was curious. Is like, I mean, it's obviously a very different feel for all of you guys. What have the conversations, you know, been like for you guys as a team? You know, getting back together and um, just kind of that sharing of information and emotions and trepidations uh, kind of all that that, that that entails okay so that's a, that's a good question so we haven't i guess as a staff we have talked a little bit more about all that and, and we'll see everybody's ready to go i think that the top office part is that we've seen our, our players but uh in different groups you know I, I don't get to see like today i didn't get to see some of the guys that were on the whole stadium uh so but the conversations you can see that the guys are like really really happy to be here, everything going, um, and, and that end. But we haven't had those like big conversations. I think tomorrow we'll have our first meeting, and then uh, after that we'll figure out how we're gonna be able to kind of like talk a little bit more about you know the plan and, and how we try to up everything here in the next couple of weeks. And also, too, kind of on that same note, have y'all had conversations about like you know the family interaction, outside interaction, outside of the ball, those different types of things. Yes, we have talked a little bit about that, uh, and I think a, a, a lot of the guys, the, the ones I've talked to so far, like they haven't uh, bring their families in yet. Uh, some of them, you know, kept their families at their at their you know hometowns for now. They're just trying to get a feel, see how things are going to be here, and and kind of like how you know the situation, you know, with the with the COVID and all that stuff for around you know in Texas and all that. Uh, they just want to see where they are before they actually bring their families in. That's that's the what I'm. I've been getting from a lot of the guys that we have in town. Thank you, Julio. Thank you. Go to Levi Weaver. Hey, Julio. Uh, this is hey, more, this is more a a clarification on the question that Evan asked than anything new. But guys like Palumbo and Allard specifically, with with the bigger roster to begin with, say like a thirty man roster, is there some temptation to kind of you know maybe take advantage and have those guys on the active roster as bullpen guys or are you determined with a certain set and it doesn't have to be those guys but with a certain set of guys to go ahead and from the very beginning like hey you're a starter even if that means that you are not on the big league squad yeah. i just I, obviously you know there are guys that you know for me they're they're still competing because you you never know you don't know what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks and and yes you know we we have thought about those some of those guys they they look really good and we think they're like you know they're ready to go and, and, and everything looks really good you know, yeah, why not? You know, why not having some guys that can be length? You know, usually you don't think like that with some of these guys just because you want to make sure they continue to develop. But, you know, there's no minor leagues right now. So, right. It, you know, if they don't make the team, it's like they're going to be throwing same games and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a, you, you think with them a little bit differently, you know. So for me, uh, and this is just my opinion, I think they are uh, competing as well uh, just to make the team. And the role, obviously, that's, that's a different story. But, you know, they can be a bullpen arms if they're ready to go and they look better than some of the other guys as well. Right on. That's all I needed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we've got a couple follow-ups and we will go to T.R. Um, Julio, Cody Allen, when Cody Allen came to spring training, because of his past, he was viewed as a potential closer and then his, had his arm issues and fell behind. Is he coming to summer camp with it being told that he's a potential to be the Rangers closer? No, he's coming into camp to compete. That's the way I see it. You know, obviously he has a lot of experience and 
and uh, and you know we know that he's close in the past and everything. But I think the goal for him is just uh, he's just trying to make a team and and come in and compete. And he seems like he's right now he's in a really good spot. I mean he he threw a pen today. He's been throwing a lot of life EPs here uh, since he's been home. Uh, so I can't wait to see him as well and to see how how things develop and, and, and kind of go from there. But definitely a, a good guy to have around. Okay, thank you, Julio. Thank you, John Blake. Thank you. And our last question will be from Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, Julio, you said you're working with guys. So how many how many of your pitchers are currently in Texas and, and how many are um, not – going through the test, have cleared the testing process and are able to, to, to throw right now? Everybody's in camp right now. Okay. Everybody's in camp. Yeah. We, we yeah. Well, I'll, let me take that back. I, I'm thinking about So the only guys that are not in camp right now is because they just flew in today is the Latin players. Okay. Uh, some of the Latin pitchers like Volquez, Nicasio, Cura, uh, they're, uh, they're coming in uh, today and then they'll get tested okay. tomorrow but the rest of the guys okay, are in camp. Okay, thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you.